Hello humans, Batsy here with another create video. Today we going to have a look at an amethyst farm. We will see how it works, how to use the schematic in your worlds, and of course, how to set everything up in survival. As you can see behind me, the design is based on a minecart contraption, and all it requires to operate is a bunch of rails. I have added a display board which it's very much not needed, but other than that, it doesn't use any rotational force. It can also be adapted to use less powered rails, in case you don't want to spend gold. All you need to do is add more redstone torches, and spread a few powered rails around. The humans can also notice there is a bit of redstone on the right, but all you need is a few pieces of redstone dust and some brass sheets. All in all, the farm is fairly simple to set up and decently cheap. Now, let me show you humans what this farm is about. Underneath the rails, we have a bunch of spread out budding amethysts. I will show later how to get those, and how to move them. For now, all that matters is that they are spread out with a gap of two blocks between them, to make sure the amethyst can grow nicely between them. Over here on the right side, we have the minecart that will gather all those amethyst. It consists of two deployers. Actually, let's go to the other one that isn't a contraption yet, it will be easier to show. You can see here both deployers have a filter with a diamond pickaxe. If we take one of them, the important part is that they have Fortune 3 on them. It will still work without it, and it will even work with a stone pick, but Fortune 3 pretty much doubles the output, so it's very much wanted. Unbreaking will simply mean not having to repair this as often, given how long amethysts take to grow, even without unbreaking, it's gonna take a long time to break. Efficiency 5 is probably a wasted enchant in this farm, but we have a couple of villagers with that enchant so I went for it in the SMP. It's also very important that the deployer is set to attack, otherwise, it won't mine out the amethysts. I assume the schematic will remember the deployer settings, but just in case, make sure that's set to attack. When the cart is running, the top deployer will gather all those amethysts. And during those ups and downs, it will swap between the middle side or the top and bottom sides. If you take a look here, over this diagonal it's where the side cluster is located. Even though it looks like the deployer should be higher up, it still counts the same as the flat rails, that means at that high, it's gonna mine the sides. Then when it goes up by one, both deployers at the same time will mine at the top and bottom clusters. Then the middle section is the same, even though they look diagonal, the top deployer will still reach the middle section, and mine out both clusters. It will continue with this pattern until it has mined out all of the amethyst clusters. The next part is, how we know they are ready to be mined. If we mine one of those smaller ones, they will give us nothing. We need them to be full-grown amethyst clusters. The answer is, we don't know. There are ways with normal redstone to detect whenever it grew the four stages, but honestly, it would end up being massive. So instead, we have this simple redstone clock. What these pulse repeaters do, is delay the initial redstone signal they receive, by 30 minutes each. So by the time it goes through the last one, two hours will have passed. On average, and according to the wiki, it takes two hours and 20 minutes something, for all six sides of an amethyst to fully grow. We could extend the timer to 2 hours and 30 minutes to be sure, but I'm gonna test it with 2 hours and see if most of them grew or not, and if it's worth going further. Also with create 0.5.1, one single pulse repeater can extend the signal by an hour. I have set them to 30 minutes in case someone is playing without an updated version of create. If you are playing in 5.1, then adjust accordingly, or leave the 4 there, it will work either way. Whenever the signal reaches the end, it will fire up the minecart and it will also bounce back, and start the sequence yet again. This circuit will endlessly be looping. 
And of course, we started up with this button down here. I have also added this clock here that displays a timer on the board. But ignore that for now, I will show later how that doesn't seem to be very reliable. I can demonstrate how this works really quickly, will be easy to understand it while it's working. If we press this button, you can see how the cart starts making the circuit. And the redstone signal reached the first repeater, which will take 30 minutes to go through. You can see how the second one already has a signal, that was from previous testings. This is important, make sure you only activate it once, and the circuit has only one pulse going through, otherwise, the farm will activate too soon. Simply remove whatever repeater has the pulse, and put it back on to fix it. If we check down here, you can see how the cart is moving along. Taking all the amethyst shards with it. And then it goes back to base, it's fairly simple, really. Once it reaches the end, it will simply throw all the items down this chute. And it's back to base now. Now it's going to stay there for a couple of hours until the next run. Amethysts do take a really long time to grow. This is the schematic I will be sharing. You will see later how the timer I added doesn't seem to work properly for our needs. And it was just a visual guide to know how long it's been waiting, it's not needed for the farm to work anyway. What is included in the schematic is the card itself. I will leave it on the side here so the cannon places it down. All you need to do is make sure the assembler is set to lock rotation. That's very very important. Then all you have to do is power it up, pick it up with the wrench. And then place it on the starting rail, make sure you pick it up and place it properly. The deployer needs to be on the left side of the rail. Then all you do is click on the button so the farm starts, and just leave it there in a loaded chunk. It will slowly grow amethysts while you do other stuff. Important note too, a vanilla chunk loader won't make the amethysts grow. It depends on the random tick rate, so it needs a player nearby, or a mod that imitates a player. Now that we've seen the farm, and understand how it works, I'm going to show the humans how to gather and transport those budding amethysts. Since they can't be silk touched, it requires a bit more preparation. We are here at the SMP. I found this geode near my industrial district, so we're going to take some of these budding amethysts for the farm. First, we clear up some of the non-budding blocks, to have easier access, and to reveal some of them that could be hidden. Then we put a rail, with an assembler on top, and we place the first cart down. In this case, we have two budding amethysts together, so we glue them first. Now we power up the cart, taking both of them. As you can see on the screen, we can't simply pick up the cart, so we will have to place many rails and slowly move the contraption to the location of the farm. For that reason, we're going to group a few more budding amethyst. First, we move this cart forward until it aligns with the next one. Then we break the cart so the amethyst becomes blocks again. We glue all three together. And we are ready to align it with the next one. We do this as many times as we want. The farm we making contains 25 blocks, so 25 times it is for me. Once we have as many blocks as we want for the farm. We take it to the surface, and place it on rails, ready to be transported. In my case, the farm was rather far away, so it required a fairly long line of rails. I had the help of Damdra, and it was still a funny project to do, so, I didn't mind the journey. We laughed a lot along the way, the situation was pretty comical to watch, and it made for a good cinematic shot. Of course, you can always make the farm in the geode itself, simply spreading the amethysts, but I recommend moving them to a place where they will be loaded often.
once we have enough blocks at the location of the farm, it's time to put them in place. I decided to use the cannon with the schematic, without giving it any blocks, just to see where the amethyst would go, and to clear up the area. Then I added another schematic with only the floor of it, and I marked the locations of each of the blocks. I connected them in lines, to facilitate the placement of the blocks. And with all that set up, I moved rails along the lines, and then one by one, I started to move the amethyst in place. Lowered them to where they belonged, and removed the cart so they become blocks again. It takes a while to set up, but it's not the worst thing to do. Of course, there are many ways to move them around, but I thought would be a solid example to show one way of how it can be done. With the amethysts in place, I build the rest of the farm. Something that could be done by simply placing the schematic, but I do enjoy doing farms anyway, and this one is easy to do. And just like that, the farm is complete. I also decorated it a lot and fixed the basement a little bit, since the poor witch farm was looking rather sad down here. So let's see what I've done. Right away you can see I added all this stone to the ceiling, with a little curve towards that wall. Over here it's the output of the witch farm, so I placed down all those trapdoors to prevent us from stepping on the belts, and because it looks cool. The ceiling is also the bottom part of the witch farm, so, some of those slabs are there to cover ugly blocks. Like these walls, are covering deep slate from the other side. Overall I think it looks alright. Then we have the vaults that Damdra placed down. Which they look very nice very nice, good job on that. A funnel to load shulkers and everything. But on the other side. I extended this tunnel to the farm, and boy does it look cool. It looks amazing. But no spoilers no spoilers. Over here I added some more decorations, I love using metal girders to pretend it's there for structural integrity, I think it gives it a realistic touch. Then over here we have the corner where I added a water wheel for the timer, something that really isn't working properly, but it looks neat. On the other side, you can see the timer. It says it's been close to 3 hours, but it actually hasn't even reached the 2 hours, yet. I think it's somehow still ticking even when I'm not nearby, while the redstone behind, nor the amethyst, are actually doing anything. I actually have no idea honestly, but it simply isn't working in sync with the farm. The redstone circuit itself does work perfectly fine though. I have been building for close to two hours, and the circuit is about to finish, so, it clearly works. I will leave it here in case any human knows why is messing up, but I'm not gonna pay much attention to it. But now yes, let's take a peek at the shiny background. Ta-da! I love it, it looks so amazing! The first thing is the lights. I made use of sea lanterns with connected textures because I simply love this effect, it's so cool. I also placed them one layer lower, so if we look at it from a bit far away. The lantern still gives an awesome light effect, but it's hidden now. And the rest is self-explanatory, I added a few layers, and many clusters around, to give a similar effect to a geode, but keeping it more natural with the square space we working on. It's such a cool looking farm. I also added some lights here and there as you have seen already. Almost forgot, added those corners too, to cover the sea lanterns at the top. I really love this effect, with the glass and everything. But yes, that's pretty much the farm. I think this ended up being a pretty cool project. And it looks like it's almost ready to be harvested. There are a thousand and a bit over a hundred in there, we will see what we get in two hours. I will go afk in a corner or something and check it when it's done. Alright, it's been barely a couple of minutes when I heard it running again. We will see how much it gives this time. We got around 600 by the looks of it. Not bad, not bad. I think I might try running it for two hours and a half next time and see how much it goes up. I think this field should be able to go near a thousand each time if it was fully grown anyway, so we barely getting half right now. If half hour longer means much better rates per hour, then I might adjust the schematic accordingly, but for now, this will be it for this episode. I hope the humans enjoyed this little project, and that the farm is useful for you all. To make tinted glass or just amethyst for decoration, whatever the case, I hope you enjoy it. Thank you so so much for watching, 
Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see the humans next time.